This video will provide a brief introduction to ANOVA or Analysis of Variance. Analysis of Variance or ANOVA is a very typical test used when we have two variables where the dependent variable is continuous and the independent variable has more than two categories. You'll remember that when we did the difference of means test and we used hypothesis testing to look at the difference of those two means, we had our dependent variable was continuous, we could calculate an average, and our independent variable was dichotomous and discrete. In this example, or when we use ANOVA, it's very similar, we could calculate the same problem, or more typically, we have an independent variable that has more than two categories. <clears throat> For example, we could be examining the average number of years of education and trying to determine if there's a statistically significant difference across different religious groups. In the General Social Survey, for example, we can easily measure Catholic, Jewish, Protestant, and other. We would have four different means. These different groups are numbered in ANOVA typically from 1 to J. So Catholic could be group J sub 1, Jewish could be group J sub 2, and so forth. Our ANOVA test test the null hypothesis that those means, in this case these four means, come from the exact same population and therefore they're all the same, versus they're drawn from different populations and therefore they're different from each other. Let's look quickly at our null and alternative hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is simply that all the sample means are equal to each other, that is they're drawn from the same population. In this case, symbolically, h sub 0 is equal to mu sub 1 equals mu sub 2 and so forth. The alternative hypothesis is that at least one of those sample means are not equal to each other and comes from a different population. It's another way of saying that the difference in years of education is statistically important comparing Catholic respondents to Protestant respondents. They in essence are drawn from different populations. ANOVA allows you to do some very sophisticated hypothesis testing. Usually this turns up in the different kinds of alternative hypotheses one can specify. For this course, to simplify this, we're always going to use the alternative hypothesis that at least two of the sample means are different from each other. But ANOVA is actually sophisticated enough that we could test various combinations of, of means. For example, we might have a theoretical reason to believe that the average number of years of education for Catholics and Protestants is different than for Jewish respondents. And we could set up that alternative hypothesis and test it quite specifically. Let's look at a slightly different example. In this course, we've used the example of average sexual frequency. On my right-hand side, I actually have the true values calculated from the General Social Survey of average sexual frequency for people in different marital categories. The first category is they're married, the second is they're divorced, the third is separated, and the fourth is never married. You can see on the right hand side that horizontal dashed line represents the overall average sexual frequency without regard to group membership, your marital status. The individual dots represent the means of those different groups with a 95% confidence interval. And you can see that three of them are different from the overall average, and two of them are quite different from each other, that is the married compared to the divorced, with the married group being above average and the divorced group being below average. This type of graph is consistent with the alternative hypothesis that at least two of these means are different from each other. On the left-hand side, I've made up some averages. They're not actually anything based on GSS data, but that graph on the left is consistent with the null hypothesis. All of the average group sexual frequencies fall very close to the overall average and close to each other. If we were to see evidence like the graph on the left, we would conclude that the null hypothesis appears to be correct. We'd fail to reject it. If we see evidence like on the graphic on the right, we would conclude that the null hypothesis should be rejected and that the alternative is more plausible. One of the tricks to understanding ANOVA is to understand what a group effect is. This comes out of experimental design, not observational design. One of the bad things about statistics is I guess we run out of letters to use to represent things. So typically, a group effect is represented by alpha. Please don't confuse this with the alpha values we use in hypothesis testing. Alpha here simply means the difference between a group mean 
and the overall or grand mean. So on the table on the bottom on the right, I've listed out for the different marital statuses, the married, divorced, separated, never marrieds, the mean sexual frequency for each group. That's in the column labeled means. In the column labeled effects, I've listed the difference between that group mean and the overall or grand mean. And then finally, I show you exactly what that difference is. For example, we know that any number that's positive here means that that group is above average with regard to sexual frequency. So the never married group, on average, is, has sex four times more frequently per year than the overall average. The married group has sex 2.24 times per year more than the average. On the other hand, the divorced and separated groups are below average, with the divorced groups being fairly far below average with a value of nearly 12 and a half times per year less frequently than average. What we're really asking when we look at ANOVA is, is there a statistically significant group effect? Does your marital status correlate or is it associated with some behavior, in this case, sexual frequency? Here's an example of what a statistical application looks like solving this particular problem. On the top part of the graph, on the top part of this um, slide, you can see that I've just listed for each group the means, the standard deviations, and the frequencies. Basic descriptive statistics describing the average sexual frequency, the variability of sexual frequency, and the number of people in each of the marital status categories. The guts of the problem lies down below. You can see that there's a lot of numbers in this table. For the, This is called an ANOVA table, and there's a lot of numbers in it. The number that's really most important initially is that one labeled probability, P-R-O-B, greater than F. We see here that, that is, the value is 0 0.0049. That number is the p-value that we discussed in the difference of two means problems. We know that whatever our alpha value is, say alpha 0.05, we could compare the p-value to that alpha value and make a statistical decision. In this case, if I set alpha equal to 0 0.05, my p-value is less than 0 0.05, and I would reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis here is that there's no difference in average sexual frequency across these different marital status categories. The other number on the table that's particularly important is the f-value. This f statistic is equivalent to the t statistic in the difference of two means test. That is, this is the value that you calculate in step number four of hypothesis testing. The, the p value is simply the area under this particular sampling distribution, that is the f distribution, that exceeds 4.31. Either one of those values can be used to do the hypothesis test and come to a conclusion in step five. If you use the f statistic, you're going to need to learn how to use the F table in the back of your statistics text and look up the appropriate degrees of freedom, and we'll show you how to do that a bit later. The other numbers in this table are not that important analytically. They don't provide any unique information to us that helps us interpret the problem, but they're simply used to calculate the F statistic so we can make our decision. In other words, all the numbers in that table are set up in a particular order to make calculating F easier. We're going to go through that table in great detail, show you the formula for each cell, give you an example of how to calculate those values, and show you how the whole table is put together. But remember, at the end of this, the really important number is either the F statistic, in this case 4.31, or the p-value, in this case 0 0.0049. And we're trying to answer the question, we have an observed value of F of 4.31, is that number large or small relative to what chance could produce? And in this case, even though we don't know how the number is calculated, we can conclude that these means are statistically significantly different from each other and that f of 4.31 is greater than we'd expect by average. We'll have other videos on this topic shortly. I hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you in class.